This is a Netta retreat. During this retreat, I gave uh, almost nine Dhamma talks, all on Metta. And if you remember all of them, you will be really filled with Metta by now. Now, Metta is not something that you sit down in one place and contemplate on certain ideas, certain words, certain thoughts. Metta is something that we should express through our thoughts, words and deeds. We can speak with metta. We can speak to people with friendly thought, friendly attitude, smiling face, with uh, tight words, meaningful words, words with loving kindness and compassion. We, like, we can appreciate other people's things, achievements, success, skills with metta. We can help people with metta. As uh, Kanti pointed out, this entire place is, an, is a manifestation of people's metta. Some people have uh, done so much for this place, they have never been to this place as yet. This place since we started in 1982 uh, up to this day, so many people, thousands of people have, been contri have contributed to this place in various ways. And some of them have never seen this place as yet. This uh, stained glass window here, somebody donated and we invited that lady to come here and see. She <laughs> never came here, <laughs> just donated them. Out of respect, out of compassion, out of loving kindness, like that people donated many things to this place. As I said in my yesterday's talk, generosity is generosity means nothing if it doesn't come with metta. That means when you make certain uh, generous act, you always wish, may my generous act benefit others, benefit others, uh, may, may my generous act uh, help others to live in peace, harmony. May they live with happiness, joy, without pain, difficulties. Let my generous act help them to live in uh, comfort. So even generous act becomes real generous act only if we, if we do it with metta. So, Therefore, we must remember, metta is not something that we do in sitting in one place, thinking and thinking and thinking and thinking. But it must manifest in our daily life, especially when we associate with people. people we need other beings to cultivate metta. We need humans, animals, divines, insects, all living beings to cultivate metta. If there is nobody on earth, who needs metta? Even we don't need that. <laughs> we need metta because there are other beings. We need metta in order to live in harmony, in peace, in joy and happiness. And metta is the, the real uh, uh, message of the Buddha. As I said, metta vihari yo bhikkhu pasanno buddha sasane adhigache padang santang sankharupa samang sukham. One a bhikkhu who lives with metta overcomes his sankhara and enjoys happiness of peace. Sankhara upasamang sukham. He enjoys the happiness of appeasing sankhara, overcoming sankhara. That means, when we practice metta in all levels, in thoughts, words, deeds, just like practicing mindfulness, as you know, mindfulness and metta are equated. In Karani Metta Sutta, Buddha said, etang satiṃ adityaya, having determined with this mindfulness, that mindfulness there means metta. 
So metta is the underlying principle of all wholesome thoughts, words and deeds. Even the fetters, hindrances, all hindrances can be overcome through the practice of metta. All the fetters can be weakened, not be eliminated, but can be weakened through the practice of metta. And therefore metta has such a force, power in uh, spiritual training, spiritual practice, in our spiritual discipline. And this is why we, we spend this whole week trying to explain, describe, answering questions related to metta and also trying to cultivate these thoughts in our minds in many different ways. Friends, I think we all uh, have this metta. Many people come into this place, many people feel that there are people living in this place with metta. That uh, is very gratifying uh, reaction from people. I really appreciate our Sangha members, our uh, member, the, the residents of uh, Bhavana, who show their loving kindness towards everyone that comes to this place. And because of their metta, we have been able to do what we are doing. And we also appreciate the metta of every, each and every one of you. Because your metta helps us to cultivate our metta. So this is the reciprocal cultivation of metta. You have done so many things for this place out of metta. And we reap the benefit of that and help us to cultivate our metta. And we thank you all for having that noble attitude, that friendship, that generosity to make all our work easy and comfortable. Now, uh, I like to conclude this with the little, uh, what you call, precept ceremony. Uh, I think some people are leaving soon after lunch and uh, soon after that we also have our board of directors meeting. Uh, so I like to end this uh, retreat a little early so that people who did not have any chance to talk with each other will have little time to, you know, get to know each other. Otherwise uh, we can go until uh, 11 o'clock. Normally people ask me to end the retreat yesterday or end the silence uh, yesterday so that they can uh, have a little uh, chat. We all came on Friday and straight away we started the retreat and people didn't have time to um, say hello to each other. And therefore, uh, I like to end this uh, retreat a little early today. Giving the five precepts, we started with the eight precepts. Now we give the five precepts and have very short puja. All together will take about uh, 10 minutes. 